Hello everyone, welcome to SMEs eSchool. So today we will discuss the first chapter of Unit 2. The name of the chapter is Grounds of Induction. We have already discussed about induction, what is induction, types of induction and their definition, their similarities, dissimilarities and all the things we have discussed. So today we will discuss about the grounds of induction. So First of all, what was induction? In induction, we try to get a universal real proposition. And that proposition or that conclusion can be used in deduction, right? That is induction. In induction, we get a huge inductive leap from some to all, right? From some people, we get all people. That kind of conclusion are drawn in induction, and what are the grounds of induction depending on what we get the conclusions. We will discuss about that in this chapter. Okay. And if we talk about the aim of induction, the aim was always to get a general real proposition and we always try to attain truth. Okay. But while trying to get a proposition which is universal and which is real, we have to face some problems. While we are getting a conclusion like all men are mortal. This might not be true. There might be some doubt. Right? All kinds of conclusions cannot be proved, cannot be examined. That might be true or might be false. They might not be 100% true. So to get rid of this problem. To get rid of this problem we use these grounds. Okay, We depend on these grounds. To solve this problem induction depends on two grounds. That is some laws or processes. We will follow some laws or some processes to reduce our problem or or to get a correct proposition or conclusion so there are two types of grounds first is formal ground first one is formal ground and second one is material ground okay we have talked about two laws do you remember that the law of uniformity of nature and the law of causation we have already talked about that in our previous class so when we talk about these laws these laws are formal formal grounds of induction we have two types of grounds right formal ground and material ground and when we talk about these two laws the law of uniformity of nature and law of causation these two laws are formal grounds of induction okay so there might be a question give one example of formal ground of induction so you can write any one of them right and when we observe something in general that observation in general is the material ground of induction. Formal ground is these laws. And when we talk about material ground, it is the observation we do. Okay. The general observation done for the induction or for the conclusion is called as the material ground. Both simple observation and experiments are included in the observation. So when we will talk about the material ground there will be simple observation as well as the experiments okay both will be included in the material ground grounds of induction right so now if someone asks you like what is the definition of grounds of induction or ground of induction then you can write the laws or processes the laws or processes depending on which induction establishes a general real proposition that will be known as the ground of induction. Okay. 
so now let's talk about the formal and material grounds of induction so first of all we will discuss about the formal grounds so we have learned that when we talk about the formal grounds there will be two laws or two main processes that is the law of uniformity of nature and the law of causation you will get a particular chapter on the law of causation right mostly we will discuss about the law of uniformity of nature in this particular chapter okay and when we talk about the material grounds then we will talk about observation and experiment so there might be question then uh, there might be a question that what are the types of material grounds you can write observation and experiment okay so now let's talk about the laws before that if someone ask you to define what is formal ground and what is material ground then you can define that from these points the laws which guarantee the formal truth of induction are called as formal grounds of induction and the processes which guarantee the material truth of the induction will be called as the material grounds of induction as simple as that okay and you can directly even write like uh, when we talk about the formal grounds of induction uh, we talk about these laws these two laws like like that also you can write it we have discussed about about an example in the previous class that ram is mortal sham is mortal madhu is mortal from these things we can conclude that all men are mortal because all these three people are <laughs> all these uh, names are of some persons or some man right so we can conclude that all men are mortal so now the question arises that we cannot prove the uh, death of every person in the entire world right so how can we believe that this conclusion is true to remove that problem to remove that doubt what we consult with we consult with the law of uniformity of nature nature always behave in an uniform manner okay if you touch something hot what will happen you will burn your hands or fingers if you eat ice cream you will feel cold you will feel the chill <laughs> okay so whatever kind of ice cream it may be okay it might be of any flavor it might be of any color you will feel the same sensation the cold right so the nature behaves uniformly okay in case of everything every natural processes will follow the law of nature the uniformity of nature for example sun rises the earth glows the earth glows with the light of the sun sun sets the light diminishes and all these things we feel very hot in june july month and we feel very cold in december january so this all things are governed by the nature or by the law of uniformity of nature the nature will always keep behaving in the same manner from this thing we have seen many people dying we have experienced that from all this experience of nature we have naturally seen people dying from that thing we can conclude that all people all men are mortal okay so this law will help us in those kinds of things so this law says that in nature if the circumstances if the circumstances are repeated the events must be repeated if the same circumstances occur the same event will follow so mo koluwe tumaluko kotha tu je kenekwa hoy amar nature kenekwa behave kore and in nature there will be always parallel cases okay ami jenekwa dekhi thaku jenekwa hoy ase that 
that is being repeated again and again and again okay and nature will keep behaving in the same way so this is the law of uniformity of nature everything in universe everything in the universe is uniform in accordance to nature anything happened in the past and is happening at the present have the chances of happening the same in the future also the all the things happening around us will will be repeated in the same manner okay in the past the sun rose in the east at present also the sun rises in the east and in future also it will keep rising in the east right the nature nature's behaviors doesn't change right nature is uniform with regard to to the essence of the things all the things of a class possess certain essential qualities and these essential qualities are present in all the things of a class but the accidental or superficial qualities are not equally present in all the things of the class the accidental qualities of man that is black black white tall short rich poor may be various in spite of these differences only for essential qualities we can put them in same class as men gutei manu bilak dekhat eke no hoy kisman short hobo pare ukha hobo pale black and white hobo pare rich poor hobo pare so different kinds of hobo pare but still otherwise ami manu kini सबखि जी नेचुरल बिहेवियर आसान एक कारण आम एट क्लास मानुख राख और नेचारे सदा मानने एक बिहेव कर एंड दिस इज द मेन थिंग अव द मेन केक्टरिस्टिक्स अव दिस ल उलवेज गेट द सेम रिजल्ट ओके इन नेचार and when we talk about this uniformity of नेचार द ल अफ यूनिफर्मिटी अफ नेचार देन उ गेट टू forms there are two forms of this law that is uniformity of coexistence and uniformity of succession so in in the first one uniformity of coexistence we see that some events they can occur coexistently okay in the uniformity of coexistence we perceive two events that occur coexistently i mean मानने दूटा इवेन्ट्स एक लगे हुआ देख फर एग्जाम्पल मिल्क इज ह्विट एंड वाटर इज लिकुईड बोथ आर एट द सेम टाइम राइट दे आर को एक्जिस्टिंग सो देट इज कल दस यूनिफर्मिटी अफ को एक्जिस्टेस कितु किसान बस्तु एट आनटूक फलो कर पे देट इज कल दस यूनिफर्मिटी अफ सकसेशन फर एग्जाम्पल डे फलोज नाइट एंड नाइट फलोज डे दिन पीछे राति है रात पीछे दिन है सो दिस 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 इज व्हाट हैपेनिंग दिस इज हैपेनिंग इन अ साइकिल ओके दिस इज नॉट को एक्जिस्टिंग टुगेदर राइट सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज यूनिफर्मिटी ऑफ सक्सेशन एंड वी परसिव टू इवेंट्स दैट ऑकर सक्सेसिवली एटार पीछे एट देखी पाँ हेटो कम यूनिफर्मिटी अफ सक्सेशन कौ from the beginning we are saying again and again that nature behaves in the same way but kisuman khetrot it might differ ami jibilak kisuman differences dekhi rakho jene earthquake flood etc but there are different kinds of examples hebilak ki hoy hebilak they are very different they are unique so we can conclude that nature sometimes doesn't behave evenly or uniformly right kintu that is very rare case okay and these events are governed by no laws ebila ami ko law di ki koribo nuaru explain koribo nuaru nobody is sure when earthquake will come when flood will occur we cannot conclude that we cannot say that when tsunami will destroy us ebila ami kobo nuaru so nature or hitut mane uniform eta behavior ami lokkho koribo para nai ओके सो इन साम रेयर केसेस नेचर माइट नट बिहेव यूनिफर्मलि कितु 
in most of the cases it will behave uniformly okay because the the examples we have about uniformity is far more larger than what we have seen in these situations these events like flood tsunami and all uh, other other than that most of the things we always get examples examples of uniformity of nature okay the uniformity of nature does not mean that there is no variety in nature tar mane ami uniformity boli je koisu that doesn't mean there will be no variety there will be variety but mostly in general case what we we will see the uniform nature the similar manner we will see okay but according to mill mill says that universe is infinitely various and it doesn't have uniform nature mill says that mill the great philosopher mill says that we will discuss about his contradictory statement in the next class for now we have understood a little bit about the law right we have discussed that there are two grounds of induction first one is formal and second one is material material so when we talk about the formal grounds of induction then we talk about two laws first one was the uniformity of law and second one is the law of causation so we have discussed what is uniformity of nature we will discuss about the paradox of induction that is the mills contradictory statement about this principle of uniformity of nature we will discuss about that and if you have doubt regarding this principle or this law of uniformity of nature then let me know in the comment section i will try to help you out and we will see you in the next one and discuss discuss the remaining portion okay thank you for watching if you have not watched the previous videos previous chapter chapter then links are given in the description you can check that out okay thank you for watching bye bye